Ay, namin na Are you able to take care of me, Pekinde, for going to school? So I'm be happy for that. Don't you get the well body first with the long life with me, Pekinde. So I'm happy for that. Now they make her happy always. We don't can clean what I tell me, Pekinde, don't go to school. Me self, they see that they hang the time with me, fisherman, they come on and see. In Sierra Leone, Salumatu receives the equivalent of $10 per month to supplement her family's income. I'll be there while I'll be joining the program. I'll not be getting nothing. But I'll be this fish business, I'll be there, drag, drag. I'll go now, one of them fishermen, they go trust me. I'll come on sell. I can't pay. The profits, I'll put small, I'll keep them. The other, I'll eat, I'll give lunch to me, picking them, pay school fee. Say this program can me to win I begin by for myself and I know the trust again. These funds not only supplement household income, but provide investment capital for Salumatu's business. In Sierra Leone, where nearly half of the population live below the international poverty line of 190 per day, this can have a significant impact. For Salumatu and her family, these funds have been life-changing. When selected for the program, the Bangurus had just faced disaster. Their family home had burned down. Now you can help me this problem where my house be born. Say, I get for try, try, I build this house. Because of me picking that they be they sleep angry. Not all the time they put spots in a fire. But now, every day they put spots in a fire. If pick it away, they come out, go to school, they come out school, they meet rest in a house. Social safety net programs enable families like the Banguras to overcome difficult circumstances and provide the next generation with the opportunity of a better education, all in the hopes of breaking the cycle of extreme poverty and building a future where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. In fact, globally, 36% of the very poor who receive safety net benefits have successfully escaped the grip of extreme poverty. National social protection systems have been set up to reduce poverty and inequality by helping the most vulnerable cope with crises and shocks, invest in the health and education of their children, and find jobs. Despite increased adoption of safety net programs, the global coverage of poor and vulnerable people remains inadequate, with only one out of five persons covered in low-income countries. In Guinea, the program is pulling together communities to achieve a common goal to grow food. <laughs> Mena amuru ese afanyira mona kan soto mona ka diana ma mona ka naradangi mona radangi mona ka yikansi sansi fansara groupe manka mali baran ko sewa ko di me rafe ko yete kan rafe ilari na kanna konto fili mo minima mo ka groupe manne le programme de transfert monétaire c'est le même processus identification des ménages extrêmement pauvres, c'est-à-dire des personnes qui ne peuvent pas se prendre en charge. Tout cela pour pouvoir renforcer un peu euh, le développement humain et permettre à ces personnes-là de se prendre en charge. Et surtout, surtout, le point fort qu'ils mettent en avant est le renforcement de la cohésion sociale au, au, au sein des communautés. Parce que toutes les couches sont réunies et travaillent ensemble dans l'harmonie. Youth unemployment is one of the main obstacles to development in the region. In Liberia, more than 60% of the population is under the age of 24, many of whom grew up during the decade-long conflict that ended in 2003. 
With few opportunities to enter wage employment, most youth earn income on a day-to-day -day basis as day laborers or by trading at local markets. Between seven to eight out of every 10 new business that was started in this country by young people failed within the first year. In Liberia, a small business program aimed to change the odds for young women. The objective was to provide training and some income generation support to girls who have been impacted by the Ebola crisis and needed kind of way to restart up their livelihoods. So one viable lesson we learned was putting them in a group and then having them hold each other accountable for the success of the business. And then we tied them or connected them to mentors in the community who checked on them and provided them the right type of guidance. Programs that build up entrepreneurs and create jobs are catalysts for change. The key drivers of these programs are community mentors like Rebecca. We teach them about business because some of them, they really don't understand the business. So in the classroom, make them to know how to keep their record and they also used to save their money. Even they have cases, I go there and make peace. I decided to help because I want to see young girls moving. So when you see your friends sitting without doing nothing, you go around them, put them together to promote yourself. Because if you are strong, nothing will come in from you that you will not able to move it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before I received the training, I was sitting without doing nothing. I really learned enough things from that training. That training brings pride to my life. Today, people can see me and praise me because of that training. So even by some today, it was not easy. But today, I can get money for myself. I want to do everything to myself. A lot of youth are out there and telling you they can't find job, but they have potentials. So in the long run, my hope is to be able to help these young people to understand that they have potentials that they can turn into a source of employment. Rather than trying to be the job seeker, they can be their self-employer and can create employment for other people. In Guinea, university graduates are being placed in internships in their areas of expertise, all with the goal to help them transition into the workplace. On m'avait confié les tâches du contrôle d'ASA et vente au niveau de tous les services de l'hôtel. Et ensuite, on avait appris à travers comment faire les comptes. Mon aspiration, c'est de trouver un emploi décent et qui puisse garantir ma vie et pour éviter aussi d'être à la merci du chômage et à la merci des autres, d'être indépendant. In general, he has to have his own enterprise, his own day. In Guinea, the strong economic growth in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone was disrupted by the health crisis in 2014 and compounded by the decline in prices of key commodity exports. In total, the country suffered an estimated 2.8 billion in GDP losses. These losses had a large impact on government revenues and the social services they provide. Today, one of the major economic challenges the countries continue to face is managing trade deficits. This imbalance of trade reflects weak export growth and increased imports of fuel, machinery, and food. During the health crisis, food security became a real threat, with nearly 70% of households taking at least one action to cope with food shortages. The health crisis came in when the farming season had just started, and so some farmers couldn't go back to their fields, and so they had to eat some of their seeds. So we bought those seeds and helped the farmers to have access to improve rice seeds and maize at that time. And we were able to distribute about 1,200 tons of seed, improved seed, 
and um, at the certified seat. After the war, a lot of infrastructure was damaged. Uh, so the system that we had to move the seed from, from, from breeder seed to foundation seed and then to, multi, to certified seed was, was a problem. And so that project sought to, to support first the research system to bring up good breeder seed and then support the movement from breeder seed to foundation seed, which can now be multiplied into certified seed which goes to the farmers. These seeds not only averted a food crisis, but are at the root of using the country's large amounts of arable land to scale up agricultural production and processing. Across the region, businesses like Faluma Incorporated are overcoming challenges to process food and deliver to markets. We had a real tough time. We have financial issue, we had issue with packaging, we had issue with electricity. We had just about everything, but we didn't give up. At the time, we were processing manually. So we used the mother to pan everything, we used the sun to dry everything. But then we thought that um, this is something we need to do and a lot of people started requesting for it, people started to buy, and then we started growing a little bit from one level to the other. We now signed an MOU with the farmers. We have a cassava farm, 25 hectares cassava farm. So we're able to produce like um, six tons of cassava per day to do fufu, to do gari, to do flour, and everything that we want to do. Yeah, if you have passion for something, there will be nothing that will stop you. These increases in food production can have a profound impact by reducing food imports and external cash flows, improving food security, and generating additional income through food exports, allowing countries to diversify their economies and achieve sustainable growth. All this would not be possible without the roads, bridges, and other infrastructure necessary to link people to markets, schools, and health facilities. You can build the best clinics if you don't have the roads for the sick people to be able to get to the, you can have the best schools. If you don't have computers and electricity where one can have the more modern forms of learning through, through communication. At the end of the day, the private sector has to be the main driver of development and particularly the creation of jobs. Our countries have to move out of the export of primary commodities, you know, into value added, in through industries, through manufacturing. And that can only happen when you have the infrastructure. As a result of the epidemic and its human and economic toll, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone are changing how they approach disease surveillance and control. La santé est une question de développement. La santé c'est une question de économique aussi. C'est qu'il faut avoir autour des questions de santé les partenaires pour que ce soit un aspect global. N'est-ce pas qui prend en compte et la santé de l'homme, la santé de l'environnement et la santé animale. Et Ebola nous a prouvé parce que 70% des maladies, euh, on le sait bien, sont d'origine animale. Ça, c'est un aspect important. Et euh, voilà pourquoi la prochaine seule santé est salutaire pour, euh, en tout cas nous, euh, pour que les, les efforts soient conjugués euh, dans le cadre de meilleure coordination. As part of efforts to strengthen health systems, the Regional Disease Surveillance Systems Enhancement Program, already say, was launched with support from the World Bank Group and international partners. 
The initiative is strengthening national, regional, and cross-sectoral capacity for integrated disease surveillance and response in the region. Pendant la crise Ebola, nous avons vu qu'il faut nécessairement la coopération de tout le monde pour éviter des épidémies. Que là, là c'est de la santé, c'est l'activité de tout le monde. Pas seulement des formations sanitaires, mais ça part de la communauté. La communauté doit coopérer avec nous. La surveillance des maladies est indispensable pour éviter d'éventuelles épidémies. Ensuite, les équipements, les laboratoires, tout est indispensable pour diagnostiquer à temps une éventuelle épidémie. Because of surveillance and strengthened response capabilities, the affected countries now have the experience and tools to rapidly identify cases and limit the spread of infectious diseases. L'Afrique, en se donnant les mains, peut être une et combattre toutes les épidémies dans, dans l'Afrique et dans le monde. Unfortunately, too often, people focus on the sensational, the destruction, the deaths, and we get characterized by those rather than by the true elements of the nature of the society and the people in those societies. We resist saying we are poor, even though the statistics and the data say we are poor. But we're not poor in spirit, we're not poor in resources, not at both human and natural. Africa is changing, Liberia is changing. We want to be known as a country, as a continent, equal to all others, with the same goals, the same potential, and the same aspirations.